Start that again. I'm Brooks County Commissioner Christian Leinbach, and I want to welcome you to a special on the road commissioners meeting right here in Kumru Township. Uh, we're broadcasting live on Microsoft Teams live event, as well as BCTV, Facebook, and YouTube live. At this time, I'd like uh, to call the meeting to order, beginning with a moment of silence, followed by a pledge to our flag. I'm gonna to have to get used to pushing this button every time I wanna talk. This, this is a safety feature for politicians. When their hand gets tired, they have to shut up. So uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to be hosted this evening by Kumru Township. Uh, I wanna especially give our thanks uh, to Ruth O'Leary, uh, Board of Commissioners President. And uh, we also have Commissioner Alicia Rowe here. But uh, speaking on behalf of the township is Jean Johnson, the township manager. Jean. Thank you. On behalf of the Kumru Township Commissioners, Mrs. O'Leary, Mr. Miller, and Ms. Rao, and in absentia, Mr. Callback and Mr. Batdorf, I'd like to welcome the count Berks County Commissioners. Thank you for being here and all of the county staff and members of the public welcome you to Kumru Township. I'd also like to say, pardon our dust. As individuals attending this meeting saw when they arrived at the township campus, Kumru is currently in the midst of a significant building project. Kumru is constructing a central fire station to replace the only fire station that the township owns which is over 120 years old and is no longer able to accommodate the needs of the Kumru Township Fire Department. I'd also like to acknowledge the county commissioners for their support of the Center for Excellence in Local Government based at Albright College, which among other beneficial programs has conducted a series of seminars for municipal officials, including myself, and uh, presentations by myself and others who are in the audience on the ramifications of the severe decline in volunteer firefighters and the needs of the modern fire service. In addition, I'd like to thank the county commissioners for, their, for various levels of support that you have given to Kumru Township over the past several years. First, in 2015, the county adopted the Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistance or LERTA resolution on the county level to encourage existing businesses and attract new businesses to Berks County. That resolution becomes effective if a municipality adopts the appropriate ordinance. Kumru Township followed the county's lead and adopted LERTA ordinances in two areas of the township development and redevelopment projects for both of these areas have been proposed and are currently under review. Second, in 2017, the County of Berks, through its planning commission, assisted Kumru Township and the other municipalities in the Governor Mifflin School District to update our joint comprehensive plan. The county has assisted a number of municipalities to and uh, develop joint plans and revise joint plans together. There are also a number of other county level supported programs, including the MS4 Steering Committee, which is focused on stormwater issues, the Berks County Cooperative Purchasing Council, and the Berks County Water and Sewer Association. So the county commissioners are very much involved in bringing the municipalities of Berks County together. Third, in 2018, Berks County contributed $259,000 in liquid fuels funds to assist with the repair of the Poplar Neck Bridge over the Schuylkill River. 
This is a project that was a million dollars in scope and was important for two reasons. First, the bridge is the sole access to the Western Berks landfill. That landfill provides a host fee to both the township and the county. Those fees are a significant source of general fund revenue on an ongoing basis to both municipalities. The re repair project also was successful enough to remove the weight rating on the bridge, which has attracted the attention of a prospective developer. That developer has purchased the former Titus Station property and is actively utilizing grants from both the state and federal government to evaluate the feasibility of redeveloping the Titus Station power plant as a plastics recycling facility. So the county commissioners have been integral in supporting various ventures in Chumru Township that will be for the benefit of all county residents and we appreciate the county commissioner's collaboration with us over the years. We hope that we can continue a collaborative relationship for the indefinitely uh, for the good of all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean. <laughs> and quite frankly, that's the only way local government can function well in Pennsylvania. Counties don't have any authority to tell municipalities what to do. Municipalities don't have any authority to tell counties what to do. So if we want to accomplish things, we need to work together. And that is what we've done in the past. That's what we intend to do in the future and appreciate uh, the leadership, especially uh, Gene, I don't know, but there are only a couple of other township managers with the kinds of years and experience because you predate me in this role. Uh, I'm in my 15th year. How many years have you been uh, with Kumru Township? 25 years. Well, thank you very much. Uh, for your service. Any comments from my colleagues? Yes, just very quickly, Gene, thank you to you and your staff and your commissioners for allowing us to be here tonight and dealing with Cumru and some other municipalities is so much easier when there's that cooperative spirit that pick up the phone and just talk to each other. Uh, you are one of the easiest townships to deal with and we, we really respect you and really appreciate the, the teamwork. So keep it up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for uh, allowing us to be here to you, uh, to your board here as well. Uh, we really appreciate that. And like uh, Commissioner Leinbach said, it's we can't tell municipalities what to do. They can't tell us what to do, but it's a matter of working together for the benefit of everyone, uh, both in the county and in the municipality as well. So thank you for all the work that you do. Moving on with our agenda, are there any additions or corrections for the June 23rd commissioner meeting minutes? Hearing none, the minutes will stand approved as presented. Uh, we've had three executive sessions since our last meeting. Uh, we had one on June the 23rd dealing with litigation, June 27th with personnel, and June 29th personnel and litigation. At this time, I'd like to recognize my executive assistant, Anne-Marie Grill, if she would read the notice on public comment. Thank you, Commissioner Leinbach. Public comment will be accepted in person and through the Q&A function. Please include your first name, last name, and municipality for all comments. Any comments without name and municipality will not be considered. Each citizen can submit one comment. Comment length is dictated by limitations of the platform being used, Teams Q&A, Facebook, and YouTube. In-person comments will be accepted first, followed by comments submitted virtually. The meeting, meeting comment period is limited to a total of 30 minutes, including both in-person and virtual comments. This time period may be extended at the discretion of the board. Please be concise. Comments that are germane to county business will be read during the meeting and should not be considered to be interactive dialogue with the commissioners. The county solicitor shall be the final arbiter of whether a comment is germane and should be read. Any commissioner response to public comment will be done at the discretion of the commissioners. Okay, I know all three people that signed up and it does say municipality. And Ken and Nathan, the YMCA is not a recognized municipality in Berks <laughs> County, yet alone in Kumru Township. And Christopher Winters, 
Olivet's Boys and Girls Club is not a recognized municipality. And we we debated, it took us a while to determine whether or not we're gonna allow you to speak. And out of the goodness of our heart, we're here on the road to hear from the public. Uh, and we understand the reason we do this by law, we're required to allow public comment from residents of Berks County. Occasionally an issue will come up and we'll end up with people trying to influence the county from outside of the county. And the law does not require us to allow individuals outside, uh, outside the county to speak. It also is beneficial for our records. So I'm gonna recognize you each are uh, on uh, agenda items. And when you step to the microphone, if you could give us your name, your municipality, and if you'd like to tell us where you work, that's absolutely fine as well. Uh, please note you're limited uh, to three minutes, and uh, we'll begin with Ken Borking. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, I'm sorry for that little. That's why we're sitting in the corner back there, I guess. Um, uh, my name is Ken Borky. I'm the vice president for the YMCA, and I'm here tonight to uh, recognize one of your, your municipality. Oh, Center Township. Sorry. Uh, and I work for the YMCA in Reading. Um, I'm here tonight to recognize one of the agenda items on the American Rescue Plan grant that we uh, submitted. And I see that is on the agenda tonight for approval. So I just want to give a little uh, brief synopsis of what we're going to be using that, that money for. Uh, we put together a $1.3 million plan to renovate the fifth floor residential floor for our common for the court of common pleas treatment specialty court program which is uh used to help individuals maintain drug and alcohol abstinence and build positive support system in their lives in addition we're going to be using the money to uh improve and upgrade our hvac hvac systems in our child care and auditorium and also do some building envelope improvements, replacing about 156 windows and our main entrance door going into um, the building on off of Washington Street. So um, as the grant guidelines had dictated, uh, we're receiving, we have submitted about $400,000 to, to the grant for, um, as an application for approval. So on behalf of the YMCA and um, our staff and our board of directors, I thank the commissioners, I thank the review committee for acknowledging our application and look forward to using that money to uh, help improve the why. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. The next person on the list is Nathan Brandt. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for having us here tonight and giving us this opportunity to speak. Um, much like Ken, uh, my name is Nathan Brandt. I'm from South Heidelberg. Uh, township. Uh, the South Mountain YMCA Camps is my organization. Uh, Camp Connor Advisor, been in one day camp in our outdoor center, which have been in South Heidelberg since 1948. Uh, we too submitted an ARP grant for review, um, a request that covered a $2.6 million renovation of our 1948 dining hall, uh, serving 300 to 400 people each day in six shifts um, out of that dining hall. The original 1948 Hall was no longer sufficient for our, our current purposes. So we began a process in 2016 and 2017 of raising uh, $2.6 million to do that project, completely renovating uh, the kitchen, as well as the dining areas and adding a wing for accessible bathrooms um, and ramps to access the facility. Uh, we've completed phase one of that project, raising $1.9 million to this point and we were requesting assistance with finishing out this project in time for our 75th anniversary, which is this year. Um, in 2022, the actual three day celebration of 75 years here in Berks County will be in September of 2023. And it is our hope, our sincere hope that with your approval of this grant, we'll be able to open that new dining hall um, for our September 8th through 10th, 2023, 75th anniversary. So thank you for your consideration, review committee. Thank you for all of your work. Um, on a side note beyond ARP, I cannot thank the commissioners enough for the work and their responsiveness throughout the pandemic. It was a very hard two years for businesses and for nonprofits, and you were always accessible um, and always helpful. So thank you so, so much. 
Thank you very much. And the final person on our list is Christopher Winters. Olivitz. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Christopher Winters. I am from Wernersville Borough. I'm Kat. On up, you walked in right in time. <laughs> Kat Royer is my uh, COO. Um, we are here from the Olivet Boys and Girls Club, and I just have some a brief statement. Um, good evening, Commissioners, Solicitor Sadler, my fellow Berks Countyans. My name is Chris Winters, President and CEO of the Olivet Boys and Girls Club. Our organization has served the youth of our community for 124 years, celebrating our 125th anniversary next year. But tonight, we stand here as humble lifetime members, well, I'm a lifetime member of our Berks County community. On behalf of our board of directors, our team members, and most importantly, the youth that call our Olivet sites, their safe havens, their homes, their family, you're giving us the ability to create more safety network within our site structures. Our site structures have become hubs of hope. They have become places where children can find places to be mentored by others. We're asking for your consideration of the request, ARP request for funding so we continue to conserve these children in the most effective and efficient way possible. Tonight, I join my colleagues from South Mountain Y and the YMCA, and the moment is not lost on me. Together, we work for the betterment of 95,000 youth across this county of Berks. I appreciate their fellowship and their partnerships. As you make your final reviews tonight, I offer our deepest appreciation for you and your review committee as we continue to work hard at Olivet to keep the blue doors open serving the youth of our community. Our plan is simple. We address much needed necessary upgrades to the safety and security improvements of our building, as well as critical infrastructure improvements to our clubhouses. Thousands of children calls our, our clubs home. They come in, they come in for food, they come in for fellowship, they come in for athletics, they come in for mentoring. In some cases, they just come in because we're safe. And by allowing us to continue to do this and with this project, we're gonna be able to make significant safety improvements to increase opportunities that they otherwise would not have. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you very much for helping us keep the blue doors open and, and being able to reach more children. And thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much, uh, Christopher. There are no public comments online, so we will move forward uh, with our agenda. Item one, authorizing under that budget department, Adopt a resolution authorizing 2021 appropriations in the amount of $25,424, 2022 budget transfers in the amount of $36,328, and 2022 appropriations in the amount of $45,020 per listing dated June 24th of 2022. We have two items listed under human resources. Item one, authorize the appointment of Tracy Zeglin to judicial administrative assistant in court administration. Item two, authorize the appointment of Jennifer Savage to financial analyst in the Office of Budget and Finance. There's one item listed under our solicitor, adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of Hartman Valeriano McGovern and Lutz PC as special counsel to the County of Berks to handle right to know matters as assigned by the County Solicitor. There are two items listed under myself. If you look at your agenda, we're withdrawing uh, item 219-2022. So it'll be items 218 and items 220 of 2022. The first one, item A, adopt a resolution authorizing the appointment of Jamal Abadalo Redding to the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee for a one year term expiring June 30th of 2023. And now what would be item B, adopt a resolution authorizing the appointment of Gail Landis Leesport to the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30th of 2025. <clears throat> there are three items listed under Commissioner Barnhart. Item A, adopt a resolution authorizing the appointment of Robert Myers Birdsboro to the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee for a one-year term expiring June 30th of 2023. 
Item B, adopt a resolution authorizing the appointment of Troy Bingaman, Douglasville, to the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee for a two-year term expiring June 30th of 2024. And item C, adopt a resolution authorizing the appointment of Glenn Knobloch, Wernersville, to the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30th of 2025. Commissioner Rivera, also three items. Item A, adopt a resolution authorizing the appointment of Michael Toledo Blandon to the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee for a one-year term expiring June 30th of 2023. Item B, adopt a resolution authorizing the appointment of Gregory Downing Ephrata to the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee for a two-year term expiring June 30th of 2024. And item C, adopt a resolution authorizing the appointment of John Widenhammer, why am missing, to the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee for a three-year term expiring June 30th of 2025. There are several items listed under the commissioners. Item A, adopt a resolution authorizing the chair to execute the County of Berks fiscal year 2022 action plan for the Federal Community Development Block Grant Program, Emergency Solutions Grant Program, and the Home Investment Partnership Program, and to further provide such assurances, certifications, contract agreements, environmental reviews, and supplemental or revised data that the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development may request in conjunction with the plan. Item B. Adopt a resolution authorizing the chair to execute the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency subgrant award notification for subgrant 36997 awarding grant funds for a part-time forensic interviewer position within the district attorney's office in the amount of $55,117 for the period of July 1 of 2022 through June 30th of 2024. Item C, adopt a resolution authorizing the chair to execute the amending agreement between the County of Berks and Rapid Financial Solutions LLC for the purpose of adding grand jury participants to the court funds prepaid cards and or digital payments program. Item D, adopt a resolution authorizing the chair to execute the First Amendment to sub-recipient grant agreement by and between the County of Berks, the Redevelopment Authority of the County of Berks, extending the deadline to September 30th of 2022 and inserting closeout fee relating to the funding from the Federal Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Item E, Adopt a resolution authorizing Rex Levengood, Director of Facilities, to execute the Memorandum of Understanding between Berks Career and Technology Center and the County of Berks for use of the Berks County Agricultural Center. Item F. Adopt a resolution authorizing the approval of grants as reviewed by the Grant Review Committee and approved by the County Board of Commissioners in an amount not to exceed $18,080,000. dollars of county general funds such grants to be made to selected applicants and subject to the terms and conditions contained in the grant contract to be reviewed and approved by the county solicitor's office and further authorize Ronald R. Seaman, chief administrative officer to execute grant contracts on behalf of the county of Berks see the attached listing item G Adopt a resolution whereby the Berks County Board of Commissioners authorizes the one-year implementation portion of the proposed Imagine Berks Economic Development Plan, said implementation period to be effective July 1 of 2022 to June 30th of 2023 by allocating county general fund dollars in the amount of 100,000 to the Opaque Institute of Alvernia University for the Financial Lending and Innovation Collaboration Collaborative, the micro grant program, and county general fund dollars in the amount of 450,000 to the PA Americana region for tourism marketing support. 
Item H, adopt a resolution authorizing Jeffrey R. Smith, warden, to execute the Keystone Pet Enhanced Therapy Services terms and conditions form to bring therapy dogs to the jail as part of an employee wellness program. Item two, a motion to authorize execution of contract agreements, amendments as set forth on the attached listing dated June 27th of 2022. There are a total of 23 contracts. There are eight with the Area Agency on Aging, two with assessment, one with jointly with Children Youth Services and Juvenile Probation, four with Children Youth Services, one with the Controller's Office, one with the Department of Emergency Services, two with facilities, one with Human Resources, one with the MDJ's Office, one with the Berks County Jail, and one with the Treasurer's Office. Item three, a motion to authorize execution of the payments and electronic transfers as set forth on the controller's office voucher listing dated June the 30th of 2022. Item four, a motion to authorize execution of the payments and electronic transfers for the week ending July 8th of 2022, subject to final review and approval of the chief administrative officer. And five, a motion to authorize execution of all employee payroll disbursements dated July 5th of 2022. Motion to approve the agenda is presented. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Before we vote, I do want to note, uh, and it's been mentioned already, uh, I want to compliment uh, Pamela Shop Mennett and Kara Mayo in particular, they have been very involved uh, with the ARP effort. Uh, I don't know how many people in the public are aware, but the commissioners intentionally removed ourselves from the application process and from the core review process. We felt it was necessary to take any politics out uh, we upset some people actually because several people approached us and wanted to advocate for their project and we said we can't do that. Uh, you need to go through the process the same as everybody else and uh, your project is going to rise or fall on a recommendation to the county based on that process. Uh, that could not have happened without uh, Pam, without Kara nor could have that happened without the volunteers that served in the review. But even predating that, each of the commissioners did oversee subcommittees in certain areas that helped put together core parameters, not the application itself, but the core parameters. And we had volunteers uh, that participated in that process uh, as well. Uh, that's significant. And I would tell you, I would have loved to support all of the projects. We had a little over $18 million in this round. We had over $120 million in requests and over 34 million qualified applications. So while there are projects that made it through the process, there are projects that did not, at this point, there is a plan for a second round of 10 to $12 million next year. Uh, we have until the end of 2024 to determine how the dollars will be spent and all of the dollars must be spent by the end of 2026. Any other comments? Sure, I'd like to add my thanks to our staff who worked diligently and, and a lot of extra time to put this together, the 49 successful uh, folks here tonight, over $18 million. Our committee was Gary Kraft, Alex Civil, Ashley Chambers, Ken Pick, Jeremy Zabrowski, Carolyn Basic, and Jenny Batista. So we really tried to cover a wide extent of the community to understand all of the needs uh, that were submitted to the committee. And I think they did a yeoman's job of coming up with the final list for us. So thank you to everyone who was involved in it. Thank you. You also want to thank uh, Pam and Derek and uh, Kara for their work during this process as well. It's not easy when you look at these projects, there was a lot of worthy projects. There was a lot of reading that went into this uh, and it's hard to, to say, have to say no to some, uh, but I want to also thank the review committee for the time they spent because it was hours upon hours upon hours upon hours 
reviewing all of those uh, applications and trying to be objective in scoring each one of them uh, to make sure that the money was used in the best way possible. So thank you to the staff who put your time and effort into that. And thank you to the review committee as well, who put literally <laughs> many, many, many hours into this process to make sure that it was as objective and as fair as possible and that the money was being used in the best way possible for the long-term benefit of the county. A couple other things I want to touch on before we vote. One other comment about ARP. Uh, I'm 63 years old. I have never seen this kind of influx of federal dollars starting with the last year of the Trump administration and the first couple of years of the Biden administration. I can tell you that the discussions I've had with county leaders across the country, and I do sit on the board of directors of the National Association of Counties, uh, we may be flush with cash right now, but uh, that's going to change pretty quickly. And there's a strong belief that the pendulum is going to swing the other way. You can't just create dollars out of thin air. Uh, and I, I say that so that people are aware we're being extremely cautious because we want to protect the county, not just short term, but long term as well. And keeping your fiscal house in order is job number one. Second thing I wanted to touch on, there's another item on the agenda uh, that in my 15 years has not occurred and to the best of my knowledge has never occurred uh, before. Uh, that's item 233.2022. Uh, Pamela Shup Menet, along with uh, Derek primarily, Karen may be involved in this to some degree, but uh, Pam has led the effort for a countywide economic development strategy. We've had some studies in the past. I think the most significant one is the Leak Go Forth study back in 2001, 2002. Uh, but even with that study, there was no one charged with following through on it. And uh, too often government does studies that end up collecting dust on the shelf and cost taxpayers a lot of money. We made a determination when we decided to go into this effort with both the public and the private sector that we weren't going to even begin unless we were committed to following through. That first step is the action being taken tonight and it is a one year implementation of, for lack of a better term, the first phase of that economic development strategy. Uh, the business community, other community leaders have been very engaged in this. Uh, very strong support. I know that, I believe it was today, uh, you had a presentation with the Burks Alliance and very positively uh, received, uh, but now we have to execute. Uh, paying money for a study is one thing, making that money pay off for the taxpayers is another thing altogether. Again, wanna highlight that and not uh, gloss over it. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the motion is carried. If you wanna know why we put our hands up, we started doing that as soon as they became virtual. So if people watching virtually can, if may, they maybe not may not hear what we're saying, they can see what we're doing. So with that, uh, we're gonna move to uh, reports of our treasurer as well as our, uh, I'm looking here to make sure, see, I don't see anybody from the controller's office on. I do have the treasurer's report. Oh, she's right there. <laughs> you, you know what? You're not on. The You're not on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is what's funny now. <laughs> I, I'm going to defend myself. Maybe I can dig myself out of the hole or I'll just dig it deeper. But you, you always come on virtually when we're in the same building. I know. And you're, we're here in Kumru Township and she's in person. So I was looking here. So since I messed up and our treasure isn't available, we're going to go to the controller's report first. I'm Sandy here. Graffian. I'm here. I'm here. And I'll tell you what, when we're in the same building, if you stay in your office, 
I won't confess anything. Okay, our total payment register is uh, $3,174,432.83. We have a payroll this week, $4,552,850.10 for a grand total of $7,727,282.93. And I got to tell you, Christian, normally my mouth is out there way before you even have to look for me. So that just shows how quiet I was tonight. You were actually very quiet. Thank you very much, Sandy. Uh, Dennis Adams let us know that he was not able to make it this evening. Our uh, general account total balance is $253,063,500. The balance to clear is $3,308,761.80. Leaving a balance of two hundred and forty nine million seven hundred and fifty four thousand seven hundred and thirty eight dollars and twenty cents. And with that, we'll move to our chief administrative officer for your report, Ron Seaman. Thank you, Commissioner Leinbach. There's uh, two items I'd like to report on behalf of our Park and Recreation Department for activities that are being sponsored in the upcoming week. First of all, on Wednesday, July the 6th, they have a drop-in art program at the Berks Leisure Area. This will be held from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it's an art exploration on clay critters. So if you're interested in making clay critters, go to Berks Leisure Area on the 6th. But $35 registration fee and pre-registration is required. Also then, a week from tomorrow on Friday, July the 8th, there will be a sunset paddleboard session being hosted by Aqua Ohm. And this will be held at the Church Road Boat Launch at Blue Marsh at 7.30 p.m. Pre-registration is also required for this event. There's a cost of $20, and the registration is done through Aqua Ohm, not through the Parks Department. Uh, more information on these activities can be found on the county's webpage. Uh, look for the drop down menu for the Parks Department, or you can contact the Berks County Park and Recreation Facebook page for more information. Thank you. And with that, we're to Commissioner Reports, and I'll recognize Commissioner Michael Rivera. Thank you, Commissioner Leitbach. Uh, just a few things I want to share here. Uh, one, uh, Barnopoly uh, started May, sorry, June 20th uh, and runs through August the 20th. Uh, and it's the Berks Agricultural Resource Network. Uh, if we have it up on the, the screen here. Uh, and it's basically a challenge for people to go out and uh, visit our local small businesses. So there are 40 farm uh, markets, farms, roadside stands, restaurants, and businesses that are participating in Barnopoly this year. Uh, the players must submit their cards to Barn for drawings and prizes, and anyone is welcome to join the local adventure. So it's a way of getting people to be more aware of what our local businesses, primarily in the ag industry, are Remember back a year, two years ago, uh, when COVID started, there was a lot of issues with supply chain, even in the food areas. And it was uh, our local uh, farmers, our local producers that were the ones who were supplying uh, our area needs. So we wanna make sure that we continue to use them, that we continue to support them uh, as much as we can. So go to uh, berksag.org, that backslash Barnopoly, so you can get more information on there. Uh, get your uh, card, your board, and make sure you go out and visit uh, these businesses. It's open till August the 20th, and at that point, uh, they'll be selecting the winners of different items for those of uh, people that com completed the board. So learn more about it again at berksag, berksag.org backslash Barnopoly. Uh, the other item I want to uh, bring up today is this morning we had the Berks County Liberty Bell dedication at the uh, Services Center. We have uh, Ben Neely here from the Berks History Center uh, who they actually loaned us this piece of history. And uh, I read my comments there and I just want to take a couple minutes uh, to read my comments here 
as well since this Monday, uh, we will be celebrating the 4th of July. Uh, and it says, uh, I won't go through the welcoming remarks, but it says when preparing for this event, I was asked to review the translation of the Declaration of Independence to Spanish. That made me sit down and read it with more thought and diligence. While reading it, various points popped out to me. One of them in particular was the one that said, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable, which is impossible to take away or give up, with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson described the term liberty in the Declaration of Independence as unobstructed action according to our will within the limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others. According to Miriam Webster, liberty is the quality or state of being free, the power to do as one pleases, freedom from physical restraint, freedom from arbitrary or despotic control, the positive enjoyment of various social, political, or economical rights and privileges, and the power of choice. Colonists first came to America for more freedom. They came to America because they wanted political liberty. They wanted religious liberty and economic opportunity, among others. And people gave up their lives for this. At times, I ponder if in today's divided society, we are all able to enjoy the same liberties, the liberty to have our personal, economic, familiar, political, religious, and societal beliefs, the power to choose them. The liber th that liberty is for everyone, even for those we disagree with, those who, we th who think differently than we do, those who act differently than we do, those who speak differently than we do, and those who have different political points of view than we do. We don't need to agree with them or even like them, but we need to understand that they have the same unalienable liberties that we do to make their choices. The Declaration of Independence was written, signed, and fought for all. As we celebrate July 4th this Monday, let us remember why the Declaration of Independence was written and signed, and let's celebrate the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that belong to all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Rivera. Appreciate the comments, and we'll go to Commissioner Barnhart. Do I have to sing now? Okay. Please no. don't. I, I want to publicly thank uh, three people in the community, one Robert Myers, Troy Bingaman, and Glenn Knobloch for their willingness to serve on the Schuylkill River Passenger Rail Authority Technical Committee. It's such a pleasure when you pick up the phone and call people, they're more than willing to volunteer their time and effort in an unknown issue. <laughs> I explained the best I could, but they were more than willing to, to step into what ultimately will be a passenger rail authority that will be uh, supported by Montgomery, Chester, and Berks County. So I know there are a lot of municipalities that have trouble filling boards and commissions and authorities, but here at the County of Berks, it's really been a pleasure that very seldom, if ever, does anyone turn us down. Obviously, you might think they're going to get something out of it, maybe a pension or something, but uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so also, uh, we're meeting almost every week on a Thursday, the Berks County Correctional Facility Steering Committee. Uh, we are moving along with our plans, the ultimate plans for the construction of a new correctional facility to replace the existing jail, which is dated from 1933 as well as 1993. This is a multi-year process, and we are now through the uh, first phases. We have received public comment on the needs assessment, which initially was done in 2018. We had a revision of it in this year in 2022. This is really honing in on the needs of the staff and also the inmates that are there and what kind of space allocation, what sort of medical, uh, psychological, physical parameters we need for the jail. Uh, part of our team also visited two locations 
with the team, uh, the implementation team at the jail. Uh, we went to Nashville, Tennessee, and we also went to Columbus, Ohio to get firsthand information on recently constructed jails uh, throughout other states. So we're moving along slowly but surely. You'll probably see more activity as far as uh, contracts and construction probably in the year 24, 25. It's almost like many of you know, like Gene would know, there's a lot more planning and designing in a bridge than the actual construction of the bridge. Same thing for a new correctional facility. It takes probably three years uh, to plan and design before you get into about the two year uh, build process. So we will keep you updated on that as well. Uh, this is our fourth on the road meeting. We decided to do these on a quarterly basis starting last September and why missing. Uh, then we had to go back into virtual with Muhlenberg. In March, we met in Hamburg and now here in Cumru Township. So again, I wanna thank Cumru Township uh, for your willingness to have us here for us to be able to get out on the road and meet with our constituents who can come uh, downtown at 10 o'clock on a Thursday morning. Last but not least, in celebration of July 4th and everything that occurred today with the bell, I uh, wanna wish you a safe and happy uh, 4th of July weekend, good it fell on Monday, it gives us a long weekend. Uh, so thank you very much for your participation here and I look forward to any of your comments that you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Barnhart and Commissioner Rivera. A couple of items. Uh, first of all, great news today. Uh, the Commonwealth Court has permanently stopped the Wolf's administration's and PennDOT's effort to toll the nine bridges on uh, the interstates here in Pennsylvania. It was a bad idea out of the gate. Uh, Berks County earlier this year, actually, I think back in the end of January, uh, jumped on a lawsuit and almost every municipality across Northern Berks uh, joined us in that. Their total cost to participate was $100. Uh, we joined with three municipalities in Allegheny County that were already in a suit and other uh, lawsuits uh, also came into play. And it's, it's good to see the people win uh, one occasionally because it was a very bad idea. It would have included the Lenhartsville Bridge on I-78 up in Northern uh, Berks County. And my issue was very simple. I spoke out against it. Uh, over a year and a half ago when it first was floated. It's the camel's nose under the tent. If you look just at the Lenhartsville Bridge, 50,000 trips one way each day, the toll was estimated at one to $2 per vehicle. It didn't matter if you're in a motorcycle, a motorhome or a tractor trailer, one to $2, that doesn't make any sense. But start uh, taking that money and adding it up over the course of a year. Then consider the 20 to 30 bridges along I-78 when they say, okay, hey, this worked great. Now we're gonna tax all of them. It, it, it's just a really bad idea and I'm glad the Commonwealth Court uh, made their ruling today. Fourth of July, uh, my colleagues already uh, mentioned that. This morning we had an incredible opportunity uh, to enjoy a special piece of history. Uh, Berks County has its own Liberty Bell. That Liberty Bell hung in the original Berks County Courthouse. And on July the 8th, 1776, it was rung calling people together in Reading and Berks County for the first reading of the Declaration of Independence. And we have that bell today in the lobby of the County Services Center due to a great relationship with the Berks History Center. Now, the thing that's interesting, and people that know me know I absolutely love history. I never knew there was a Berks County Liberty Bell. And Emory, my executive assistant, and I had a tour with Ben Neely, who's here this evening, back, I think it was in December. And it was shortly after one of our America 250 PA Berks committees and that's all that I could think about once I went in and saw what's this bell? It, it hung in the Berks County Courthouse. Today, we placed that bell on a temporary basis under an agreement between the county and the History Center 
from now until the end of 2026. 2026 will be the 250th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. We also had a very rare copy of the Declaration of Independence, and it's actually a copy and the Blydenbergs, who are Berks County residents, uh, bought this at auction a number of years ago, explained in detail, it's made from a plate that was made from the Declaration of Independence. Uh, it is an incredible copy. Those of us that saw it today, it was almost too good to be true, but it's been completely authenticated. And we had that just there for today. I, I really didn't want to be responsible for that on an ongoing basis. In uh, addition to that, we have Ken uh, Deerstein here from RAC. Dr. Susan Looney read the entire Declaration of Independence, and it was a little humorous. Anne-Marie reached out to her maybe a week ago to ask her if she would be willing to read the Declaration. She said she would be honored, and then she called back a little bit later, and she said, does the commissioner want me to read the whole thing? It's 1,300 words. It'll take about almost 10 minutes. And the answer was yes, because I will tell you, I'm not sure that I've ever heard anyone read the entire Declaration of Independence. I've read it myself a handful of times, and we forget about it. And I encourage you to take the time to visit the County Services Center. It's right inside the lobby. Uh, our uh, facilities folks put together a design along with help from Brooks History Center. It's in, uh, cased in very thick glass to protect it. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And we have our own right here. I want to, I'm not going to give my speech. Mine was a little on the long side, as I was uh, told, but I want to read two pieces from it. One is a quote from a letter that John Adams wrote to his wife. There are three dates that are important relative to the Declaration July the 2nd, 1776, July the 4th, 1776, and August the 2nd, 1776. July 2nd is when Caesar Rodney of Delaware showed up at the convention in Philadelphia and they actually voted to ratify the Declaration of Independence. July 4th is the date that was written on the Declaration. That's why we celebrate on July 4th, even though it was July 2nd when it was ratified. And August the 2nd is when it was signed. But this is what John Adams wrote to his wife the evening of the 2nd of July. The second day of July 1776 will be the most memorable epoch in the history of America. I'm apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. It ought to be solemnized with pomp, solemn solemnized with pomp and parade, with shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of the continent to the other from this time forward forevermore. You will think me transported with enthusiasm, but I am not. I am well aware of the toil and blood and treasure that it will cost us to maintain this declaration and support and defend these states. Yet through all the gloom, I can see the rays of ravishing light and glory. I can see that the end is more than worth all the means and that posterity will triumph in that day's transaction, even although we should rue it, which I trust in God, we shall not. Everything he said came to be. Notice there were only 13 colonies, and he talked about the continent celebrating it. The only thing he got wrong was the date, and it wasn't really that it was wrong. It was right, but somebody wrote July 4th on the Declaration. And then I'll share my closing uh, comments. We stand here today to remember 
that immortal emblem of humanity and to dedicate this Berks County Liberty Bell Memorial. It is my hope that this memorial will call all our citizens back to the ideals of the declaration that were consecrated in the blood of the revolution. Let us all commit to strive for the lofty and righteous ideal that all people are created equal. This is a truth that I ask you to join me in declaring, not just to others, but especially to ourselves. Let us pledge today to be an American that respects the God-given rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all, not some, but all. Let us no longer divide our nation by our differences, but rather unite as one people dedicated to the ideal that all people are created equal. On July 8th, 1776, the words of the Declaration were heard here in Reading and at the old Berks County Courthouse. In the coming days and years and through the end of 2026, it is my hope that people will come to this memorial and not only read, but to embrace this Declaration as our Charter of Liberty. It is my prayer and hope that this memorial will help the people of Berks County rediscover the truth and value of the Declaration of Independence for themselves and for their children. That we will become what we were meant to be, a nation that understands the core role of government is to secure these God-given rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all people. Let us pledge to be the ambassadors of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all people. One last note, if you wanna celebrate in a very special way on 4th of July, come out to the Why I'm Missing 4th of July Parade. If you've never been there, it's the one parade that I participate in that I think I get the better view because riding my motorcycle, it is like, and my colleagues have been here, it's like driving through a Norman Rockwell painting. It is an unbelievable experience to see homes decorated in red, white, and blue. There's one home in particular that has an enormous American flags stretched from the top of the roof down almost to the ground. It's an unbelievable experience. I believe it uh, begins at 10 a.m., 10 o'clock on Monday. I think all three of us are going to uh, be in the parade, which we often are, but come on out, uh, celebrate our American liberty. Any comments uh, from our row officers or our row officer? Yes, Sandy. I feel like I have to get up on the table and do a little tap dance. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll spare you all. Uh, I'm doing my debit cards one more time, as you heard tonight. We are increasing the amount of people that are getting them. We're going to start using them for our grand jury participants instead of giving them checks. And I must tell you all, on election day, the Rovers did a fantastic job of getting the debit cards out to the election people. We pay a fee for every check that we void because the county is set in a program that weekly we send a database to the bank telling what the checks are that we've cut, how much they're for and who they're for because that then goes into a database. If somebody tries to cash a check that's not on that base, then it, that it won't pay us. So to go backwards through that same process, we have to pay the bank a fee to get it off of that database and the fee is $35 a check. This year, we had 170 debit cards returned to us, which we then defunded at no charge and saved $35 times 170 cards. That's the kind of money that we're saving on these debit cards for our election workers. The bottom line is if you haven't used yours, please, 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 please cash it. And if you have trouble, call the office. We have one person that is in charge of the entire program. The next thing we're gonna roll out, we're gonna start giving debit cards to our veterans, to the spouses. The county gives a stipend to every family when a, when a veteran dies. And we're gonna start, instead of giving checks, we're gonna start giving debit cards to the families for the stipend that the county gives them. So we'll just, we keep saving money. The debit cards are 55 cents. Come on, cut me a break. It costs a lot more than that to cut a check and then $35 if it doesn't get cashed and we have to avoid the whole thing.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Sandy Grafius. I also want to recognize one of our other uh, row officers. We have Mary Kozak with us this evening, our recorder of deeds. So thank you uh, for joining us. Give, give her a microphone. You were talking to him. No. You weren't. He was there. I know she okay. was there. <laughs> Well, thank you. She's referring to 2019 when I, well, 2000, 2019, I almost made it through and I ended up with a major kidney stone attack on the motorcycle. I was sweating bullets and I saw him first and said, I need to get out of this parade. Went out, got off the bike, laid down on the ground Mary was nearby. They called an ambulance, but the ambulance couldn't get through. She was the ambulance, took me over to the uh, Reading Hospital, and everything eventually turned out well. And so last year, he wanted to know if I was going to finish the parade. I assured him I would. And my bike shut down in front of the house with the huge flag. And so, it, well, no, it didn't, I thought it overheated. The battery was dead. I had problems with the battery before it's been replaced. Lord willing, I'll finish the parade. So I figured that required explanation. I make it easy. I just walk through the parade. It, it rarely fail at that. Uh, there is no public comment. And in case uh, there is a complaint, uh, we had two or three comments. Uh, one lacked a name, two lacked municipality. We commented back to them and asked them for that information. Uh, one gave us the name, but no municipality, and the other uh, did not respond. We're not going to read the comments. Uh, we're pretty clear, and we went out of our way to give an opportunity uh, for them to provide that information, and they chose to not do that. Is there anything else for the good of the order? Thank you very much for coming out, and uh, I'm going to stick around for a little while. Sure. Uh, anyone wants to uh, talk, glad uh, to discuss anything. I don't have all the answers. That's why I have Commissioner Barnhart and Commissioner Rivera for, here with me, because they do. So, motion to adjourn. Second. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm saying, boy, I thought Sandy told me she would be here. Yeah, I missed this, but you said that.